How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to go over the resume that I used when I applied for a job at Microsoft. This is the job that I eventually got and I still have. I've been working at Microsoft in their high performance computing division, which is a subdivision or subgroup within the larger Azure org for over two years now. This is going to be the first time I've looked at this resume in probably well over a year and a half, maybe two years. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here's the resume that I used to apply. Obviously, this is a two column resume, so I did not opt for a standard resume where it's just black and white and um, pretty boring looking, if I may. So I used a template from this website called novoresume.com. This is not a sponsored video or anything, though I would definitely be open to it. I just used the free version and tried to mess with it to the point that I could get all the content that I could on one page without having to pay for the uh, flexibility of their paid versions. It's worth noting that this was back in March of 2022 when the tech job market was really, really hot. In fact, I actually got in touch with the Microsoft recruiter just because a Microsoft recruiter reached out, or I should say a talent sourcer, and then I ended up applying in April, and then this is the resume that I used. This resume was not geared towards a specific job role, because the market was so hot, there was just generic, you know, Microsoft is hiring backend software engineers type job rec. And I applied to that, went through the whole interview process and then had a team match process after. But anyways, let's get into the resume. So as you can see at the top, that little blurb is pretty broad. You know, it just says open to new opportunities for backend and full stack software engineering roles. Uh, I definitely applied to a couple more ML oriented roles and then I changed that wording to open to new opportunities for data oriented software engineering roles or something like that. But for this one, I just used, you know, the generic backend slash full stack software engineering roles verbiage. So the first thing I have listed is work experience. At this point, I had worked at IBM and that was really the only place I had worked. I did have an internship prior, um, but I actually don't know if I even referenced it. No, I didn't. So I did have one corporate internship prior to IBM, but essentially I had only worked at IBM. So you'll see uh, this was back in Raleigh or the Research Triangle Park area. I really highlighted the cool technologies that I got to work with at IBM. And then I think the manager, who is my current manager, really liked that I was familiar with gRPC and other like communication protocols outside of just normal uh, HTTP requests. So that was cool. And then um, I also wanted to highlight this part here with the technical ownership, just because I wanted to show that I have soft skills and can kind of manage things in addition to just being a heads down developer. It's hard to decide what to highlight really when you're just applying to a generic backend role. So I was really just trying to highlight that I had experience as a backend developer as well as just being a full stack developer. But I really wanted to highlight that experience working in like modern technologies, not some antiquated IBM legacy mainframe technology, which thankfully I didn't actually have to work on. The next thing that I'll highlight is, you know, working closely alongside the product owner and stakeholders to develop full stack sister applications. That is really just to highlight, uh, you know, the ability to manage requirements and execute them and the project management and planning aspect side of things. And then uh, this last little bit, AI Council, worked out really well considering I was actually interviewing and now work on an AI HPC team. This was totally a volunteer thing, whereas, you know, as you can see, like the experiences that I listed above were not related to AI at all, really. I just put that just to express that I have a demonstrated interest in AI and machine learning, and um, hopefully that helped. I, who knows, really. Real quick, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I enjoy making videos about tech, lifestyle, really anything that I'm interested in, and I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like and subscribe for more. But anyways, let's go ahead and pull up the resume. Next, we have the education section. As you can see, I opted to put the Georgia Tech Masters, even though I didn't finish it at the time of submitting the application. At this point in time, I was nearly done with the master's program. I did the online master's in computer science. So I figured it was worth putting on there, but I didn't want to lie and say that I was already done with the program because I wasn't. And I just chose to highlight some of the coursework that I had done. 
I purposefully put the AI and machine learning type classes just because for the team match, I wanted to be on a team that is AI or ML adjacent. Same thing with my undergrad. I went to UNC Chapel Hill and I specifically pulled out coursework from my favorite courses or courses that I thought would help demonstrate interest and experience in fields that I'd want to move into. So the big data and artificial intelligence classes were exactly that. Moving up to the right column now, we have the skills section, which I don't really think the skills section is important per se, but it was just part of the template. And I just highlighted some various technologies. Next, we have the project section. At this point in time, I had a couple good projects that I was proud of. And I'll admit that as of late, I have not been doing a very good job keeping up with making time for side projects and whatnot. But the first thing that I have on here was a full stack project that basically highlighted my ability to see a full stack project through and through, meaning I did the front end, back end hosting, and actually made it like mobile friendly too with the various uh, bootstrap view components. But basically it was a project that allowed people to type in a Twitter username and then it would use the Watson uh, sentiment analysis feature and return the sentiment analysis for the various tweets. Next, we have AI ethics article that I wrote for fun. This is published on Towards Data Science, which is a pretty popular blog. And then I also listed a hackathon project that I did in my internship. You'll see that basically all of these projects are intended to show that I have a demonstrated interest and ability to leverage AI technology and integrate it in some form of project. So that's basically why I listed these projects. Next, we have the extracurriculars and philanthropy section. I really don't think this section is particularly important for a resume, but I just wanted to put things that demonstrate that I have the ability to be a mentor or help others, because at this point I was really kind of gunning to be hired at a level one above new grad since two years of work experience should hopefully be above new grad. But I know some people that kind of fall into getting hired at new grad level still sometimes, depending on the interview performance and the budget of the team that's hiring. Last but not least, we have interests. If I were to do a resume today, I don't think I would include either the extracurriculars and philanthropy section or the interest section. But at the time, my thought process was I can show that I am social and have good communication skills and I'm willing to help others. And then the interest section was an opportunity to show that I'm well-rounded just as a person in general and have interests outside of work and uh, highlighted some of the things that I don't necessarily have a ton of experience, but would like to move into. There you have it. That was my entire resume that got me into Microsoft HPC as a software engineer. Looking back, there are definitely things that I would change. And if I were to make a resume today, I would probably cut out a lot of the sections and just try to beef up my experiences. But I hope you found this useful and please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.